Welcome to Think About It with your host, Jaden Miller. Welcome to Think About It with Jaden Miller. Uh, this is my first podcast, so I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing some great ideas, some great thoughts with you guys. The name of the show is Think About It. What I really want you to do is I want you to think about it. I'm going to talk about a series of different topics, mostly trending topics, maybe some things that aren't so trending, but just a number of different topics just to get you thinking. So. Let's first start off with what's been going on lately in the country in the field of education. <laughs> There's a TikTok challenge going on. Uh, I'm located here in the West Valley in Arizona and this TikTok challenge is really, really something, okay? So what our brilliant, what some people would say entitled kids are doing is they're going into the bathrooms, they're removing dispensers, go figure. Uh, they're dismantling toilets, they're writing on walls, peeling uh, paper off the walls. Uh, they're toilet papering the bathrooms. And of course it has school administrators really, really frustrated. I mean, of course this damage is costly. Uh, kids are supposed to be in class learning, but you know, TikTok, uh, this TikTok challenge has really caused the students to veer off of their educational mission <laughs> onto one of uh, criminal mischief. And so now schools are getting tough. Schools are starting to respond by saying that they're going to uh, to now charge students with the misdemeanors and in some school districts around the country with felony charges for uh, a lot of this damage. What do you think? Think about it for a second. Um, is this right? Uh, should school authorities take these matters into their hands uh, so swiftly and strongly? Um, or on the other side, what about the students? Of course, uh, most of these students are underage, so the responsibility in terms of damage falls on parents. Uh, should parents be more responsible? Should they be talking to their, their students, their children about responsibility in classrooms and at schools? Uh, think about it for a few minutes. So as a person that works in a school, let me share with you my impression on this whole thing. So, <laughs> Uh, instead of being able to do a lot of my administrative duties, what I find myself doing is uh, I'm on bathroom duty. <laughs> so every time I see boys going to the bathroom, I'm following, making sure that they're washing their hands and after they do their business and that they're going directly back to class. Is that something I should be doing? Should the responsibility fall on the students to do the right thing? And what about TikTok? Does TikTok as a global company have a responsibility to monitor the challenges that are placed on their social media platform? Do they have some responsibility at all? Or again, is the responsibility individual? Do we have individual responsibility when it comes to the things that we do? Can we blame TikTok for not being responsible? And again, is TikTok responsible? Think about it. Think about it. So this is what we've decided to do in my school district. We have come down really hard. We're going to charge students with uh, felony charges. And if they don't uh, measure up in court, then uh, the school is, pro uh, is, is uh, planning to uh, go after the parents civilly. All right. And again, this sends a strong message that damaging property at school is not a prank. Uh, it's not something fun. It's not something that school authorities should allow students to do. Uh, one of the reasons why we go to school is to become more socially responsible, all right? Uh, it teaches you how to behave with others in society. Uh, and so if we minimize the damage to bathrooms, and again, this damage can run into the thousands of dollars, what message are we sending to young people if we don't hold them responsible? What message are we sending to parents if we don't hold them responsible for the damage that their kids uh, perpetrate while at school? So think about it for a few minutes. Just think about that. All right. Um, again, my name is Jaden Miller. This is my first podcast. It's called Think About It. Right now I'm talking about 
TikTok challenge. This TikTok challenge that's going around the nation. It's not just in specific areas. It is called the Devious Links. And so for those of you unfamiliar with it, let me just go back and tell you what it's about. So we've got a number of students, okay, that uh, in order to send a great hashtag out so that it will trend, uh, they're doing these series of TikTok challenges. So it started off with vandalism, all right? Vandalism of uh, school restrooms, all right? Uh, removing dispensers, soap dispensers, damaging them, um, uh, you know, putting uh, lots of toilet paper into the, into the, uh, the toilets to stop them up. Of course, as I mentioned, this is causing school authorities a lot of headaches, a lot of frustration. So then it has moved into stealing, all right? So what students are doing is when teachers leave the room or teachers are not paying, uh, paying attention, they're going into their purses, uh, taking other things out of the classroom that don't belong to them. And so the third challenge that is just starting, and I know here in the West Valley in Arizona, it started just this past Thursday, is pulling of fire alarms, the pulling of fire alarms, all right? Uh, again, we've been talking about responsibility. Should students be more responsible? Uh, should parents be held responsible? Uh, and should TikTok be responsible for allowing these challenges to be uh, on their social media platforms? And so uh, that's what we're talking about initially. Let me just say again, I'm glad that this is my first podcast. I hope that you all are enjoying it. I hope that you all will take a few minutes to think about some of the things that we're talking about as it relates to this TikTok challenge. Um, it's taken me a while to start this podcast. Um, you know, of course, you've got to get over all of the different reasons why you shouldn't, all right? Uh, how am I going to sound? Is it going to be popular? Uh, is, it, is the message that I want to send going to be a good message, all right? So uh, it's getting over those initial fears, all right? And so here I am starting this first podcast. Also, uh, it's going to be shown on YouTube as well. So uh, I had to face two challenges, <laughs> the voice, all right, and then the video, all right? And so uh, I appreciate those of you that will uh, download the podcast. I appreciate those of you that will watch this on YouTube. Uh, and so this, again, is my inaugural podcast. All right. So again, for those of you all that are listening, thank you. And I hope you'll uh, join me on this, this new journey uh, into podcast land. All right. So we've been talking about this TikTok challenge. All right. Um, so my take on it is this, that uh, students need to be held responsible for their actions. All right. Uh, how are we going to have a society of law-abiding citizens when we allow uh, children under the age of 17, and I'm talking about those that are in junior high and those that are in high school uh, to get away with uh, damaging property, to get away with stealing. Uh, and again, we have to go back to parental involvement, all right? To what degree are parents responsible? Um, sometimes parents like to drop their kids off at school and okay, they're your responsibility now. Well, no. Uh, we're responsible for educating them, all right? And we're responsible for managing their behavior while at school. Uh, but that's only for a short period of time. You still, as a parent overall, are responsible for the conduct of your child until they reach the age of 18. Uh, you're responsible for when they uh, damage property. Uh, you're responsible for their actions. Uh, the school authorities alert you uh, when... Uh, things are not going right. The school authorities take matters into their own hands because it is related to school, but uh, that still doesn't deny the fact that you as the parent are responsible for how your children are acting at school. And how can parents be more responsible? Well, first of all, you know, are you monitoring your children's social media content? All right. Um, you know, quite often uh, as parents, uh, we get bogged down into our own activities, whether that be work or whether that be um, the, 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 the personal things we like to do. Uh, a lot of parents like to play video games. A lot of parents are out of work. And so 
you know, their mind is on trying to, to regain that which they may have lost due to COVID or some economic downturn. Uh, but still, the responsibility is there, and you've got to remain focused on the things that your children are doing. Uh, you know, in our country, we've had a number of different school shootings that have happened, and that's because parents aren't alert to what their students, what their children are doing. And so it's really, really important that uh, parents be involved in their kids' lives so that these types of incidents, whether they be TikTok challenges or what have you, are minimized. There's always going to be students that want to buck the trends or want to do something differently or want to set themselves apart from others. But uh, again, there's still this responsibility that has to be there. And so uh, parents, uh, quite often it's up to you, you know, to monitor what your children are doing. Now, let me tell you about something else that goes on with this is that sometimes, and I don't know if it's a new generation or what have you, but a lot of times parents don't want to take responsibility for their students. And in fact, parents, you know, will defend their their children when they've done wrong. And where the hell did that come from? Okay. What happened to being responsible? Okay, if your, if your kid, you know, slaps another kid, you know, instead of trying to defend that, why not say, hey, you know, um, my child did wrong, as opposed to, well, was she hurt? <laughs> okay, well, it doesn't matter whether she was hurt. You know, your child just slapped somebody, okay? Um, and again, we see these things happening quite often. And so, uh, I think in some ways, that's why a lot of people aren't surprised when there's a TikTok challenge and why some kids are alarmed when school authorities take the measures that they're taking, because it's like, well, it was just, I just slapped her, you know, she's okay. Or I just took a soap dispenser. That's okay. Uh, I just pulled a fire alarm. Nobody got hurt. Okay. Okay. Uh, and again, it's this sense of entitlement that uh, a lot of older people sense in a lot of younger kids today. So think about that for a second as well. Uh, you know, is, is that a part of the reason why our society seems to be, you know, going in the wrong direction? And of course, that's, um, that's a relative thing. You know, that's up to your own discretion or up to your own opinion. But uh, we see a lot of stuff happening in our society today. And uh, for a lot of people, it seems like we're not on the, the right path. So think about it. All right, so uh, we've talked about this Devious Licks TikTok challenge, all right? And so again, we've got students that are going into restrooms and messing things up. We've got students that are now stealing from teachers or stealing from schools. And then we also have children that are pulling fire alarms as a prank so that they can trend on TikTok and other social media platforms, all right? All right, so I want you all to think about it. Think about it. What can be done? What should we be doing as a society, all right, to, uh, to mitigate these types of circumstances? Should we look at TikTok? Should we look at parents? And should we hold our students responsible? All right, well, while you think about that, I want to just segue into another thing that's going on uh, here in the great old USA. And this is about this young lady that's been missing uh, for the last few weeks. Her name is Gabby Petito. And again, she's trending on social media and unfortunately for the wrong reasons. Uh, and just to give you a little bit of information about uh, the Gabby Petito case, uh, she's one of three people who went missing uh, in the Grand Teton National Park this summer. Uh, Petito was engaged, or is, hopefully still, but uh, is engaged to her boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. Uh, and uh, my sources tell me that they had an argument in Utah while they were on a cross-country uh, trip. So you have this young engaged couple, uh, uh, Gabby is 22, uh, and I believe uh, Brian is around the same age as she is. Uh, they're traveling around the country, probably for the summer, all right? Uh, they stop in Utah. They get into an argument, all right? And the police are called, all right? They interview both. It doesn't seem as though uh, there's any domestic violence going on, and so they're left to their own devices. In other words, they're left to go on. Um, now, the strange thing about this case is that 
when Gabby went missing, and it appears as though she, when she went missing, it was in the Grand Teton National Park, but there are two other people that are missing or went missing around the same time. Is there a connection? Think about it. Is there a connection? So there's a gentleman named Robert Lowry. He was a traveler from Texas, all right? And the last ping from his cell phone was on August 23rd, all right? Uh, and so authorities are wondering, is there any connection? So Gabby's parents la last saw her uh, or talked to her on August 24th, all right? Robert Lowry, another traveler from Texas, last ping from his cell phone on August 23rd. And then there's another gentleman. His name is Cian McLaughlin, all right? Uh, Cian McLaughlin is about 27 years old, and he was last seen on June 8th hiking in the park, all right? And so these are some really, really strange occurrences, some strange things that happen. But what I want to do is I want to focus on Gabby and her boyfriend, Brian Laundry. all right? So now they get into a fight uh, while they're visiting Utah, all right, on their way to Wyoming, okay? Because that's where the Grand Teton National Park is. For those of you that are Lacking in your, geogra uh, your geography skills, that's where it is. It's in the state of Wyoming, all right? The Grand Teton National Park. All right, well, uh, sources say that after their argument or shortly after their argument, Brian took the van that actually belonged to Gabby and drove all the way back to Florida. Did not report her missing didn't say anything to the authorities, didn't even tell his parents, all right? So now he's back in Florida, all right? But now he's missing, okay? The authorities wanna to talk to him. They've come, they've talked to his relatives. Now the relatives are reporting that they don't even know where he is, all right? What a really strange case. Now, there are several agencies that are looking into this. Um, the Department of the Interior and the uh, National Park Service and the Department of Agriculture, um, they don't have ways to keep track on people that vanish in uh, American parks, all right? Uh, of course, as you know, these are vast, vast acres, and so uh, it would be very, very difficult to do that, all right? But um, so what they're doing is they're basing this information on sources, on contacts they've had, and on uh, the pings from their cell phones. All right, uh, what happened to Gabby? Where is Gabby? Why can't we find Gabby? Uh, think about it for a few minutes. Um, they were on a van-like trip across the United States. So imagine being in your early 20s, uh, you're with your boyfriend and with your girlfriend. This is the time of your life. This is a great trip. You're out on your own, all right? Um, but then something happens, all right? Um, you get into an argument, all right? Uh, one party decides that they've had enough, uh, and then they decide to leave, all right? Um, so if we look at it, you know, it must have been extremely serious for Brian Laundry to leave his fiance behind uh, in Wyoming in a park, a big park, and drive clear across the country back to Florida where his home is. Why? What's going on here? Think about it. What's going on here? Now, of course, some people are going to go to the extreme, all right, because we this is not the first time we've seen these cases. There have been a number of cases where we've had a couple, you know, seemingly on social media or uh, if people know them, uh, they seem to get along. They're a good looking couple. When you look at the pictures of them online, of course, they're smiling, they're happy. But what was going on behind the scenes? Why did they get into that initial argument? Um, there was a shop owner, you know, as they were going across country that saw the couple that said that they seemed happy uh, with each other. Um, hmm, what happened? Why can't we find Gabby Petito? Um, no more pinging from her cell phone. Uh, no more pinging from Brian Laundrie's cell phone. And in fact, this always appears suspicious in these cases, but you know, shortly after Gabby's parents reported her missing. Now, let's take a step back and remember now, Brian Laundrie is her fiance. 
Brian Laundrie is the person with her. Brian Laundrie leaves her behind and travels from Wyoming to Florida, all right, without her. Does not report her missing, all right? Does not tell anybody, hey, you know, we got into a fight. It's just like she doesn't exist. What is going on with him? What's going on there, all right? Uh, I want you to think about it. Think about what is going on in his mind. Does he have some personal issues? Is he bipolar? Um, but again, a lot of us would like to go to the extreme and say, and say, because we've seen these cases before, he's probably killed her, right? That's what people will automatically think. Um, but now he's missing. Where is he? Last seen in Florida. Is he on the run? Um, did he take his life? Uh, we've seen these stories play out in media circles so many times throughout the years. And so um, it's just a really, really strange case. We've got Gabby Petito, this young lady missing. We've got Brian Laundrie, who is now a person of interest, okay? Not necessarily a suspect, all right? See, you become a suspect when there's a series of events that happen, okay? And then law enforcement have uh, found certain evidence or certain information that would lead them as reasonable people to believe that maybe a crime has been committed, but they don't have probable cause yet. And these are some legal terms that we can talk about in another podcast, but um, so he's a person of interest, okay? He's now missing. The police simply want to talk to him, okay? And of course, we know why they want, why they want to talk to him. Hey, dude, I mean, you were on a cross country, you know, uh, a trip with your girlfriend, all right? Um, you get into an argument, all right? And dude, you leave her, okay? And you don't just leave her and go away for an hour just to cool down, all right? You travel through all of these different states, okay? And again, if you know geography well, we know that Wyoming is in the western part of the United States and Florida is in the southeastern part of the United States, all right? That's a long way. You can't travel there in an hour. It takes at least a day, okay, if you're traveling straight through back to Florida, if not longer. So I think um, let's even give him the benefit of the doubt and say 24 hours. 24 hours is a lot of time to calm down, okay? And, you know, if you're in the state of Wyoming, and let's just say you're driving through Colorado, you know, I mean, that's enough time for you to say, you know what, I, I think I, 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 you know, was a little upset. Maybe I need to turn back around and go pick up Gabby, you know, or if he was going in another direction back through Utah again, you know, when you get to the border, maybe say, you know, something's not right here. All right. Maybe I need to turn around and, and go back and apologize or or have another conversation with her. But, dude, I mean, I mean, at least a day it took you to get back to Florida. All right. And then you don't even report her missing. All right. So her family hasn't heard from her for at least a week because they think she's with you. All right. Brian Laundry. I don't know, dude. Something is not right with this story. Uh, I want you all to think about it. All right. Well, this is a developing story and it will continue to uh, play out in the media. Uh, again, my name is Jaden Miller. This is my first podcast. So what I plan to do is I plan to talk about a number of trending issues, a number of things that are coming up. And again, I want you all to think about it. So we've talked about the TikTok challenge. All right. I want you all to think about that for a little bit. And we've talked a little, a little bit about Gabby Petito. It's this young uh, lady who was with her boyfriend who is uh, now missing. Uh, it is a big story going on here in the United States. So I hope that you all will continue to download. I hope you all will continue to listen and watch uh, the videos on YouTube and on uh, the different uh, podcast platforms that are out there. Uh, my name is Jaden Miller. I want you all to think about it and you'll see me or hear from me next time. Have a great day.